Welcome to Dassault Systems 3D Experience Forum. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research, and I'm excited to have a conversation with a very, very important guest here from Dassault Systems, Olivier Rive. Olivier, thanks, thanks for joining me. me. Pleasure. So before I dive in and start talking to you about you know, the tech, the platforms, the experience, mm -hmm. Talk to me about Hollywood, Florida. You're obviously not <laughs> from around here. Not really. what, do you, what do you think? Are you liking the venue, the event, the energy? What do you think so far? I mean, it's always exciting to be in this, uh, in this kind of event because you, you, you feel the vibes from customers in aerospace and defense, transportation and mobility, life science, who come together for two or three days and share some crazy ideas about what they are inventing and what they are dreaming about. So it's always uh, energizing. Yeah, I keep hearing the stories about the personalized shoes, and I know, it's just one of the many, many things that you guys do, but I'm telling you, as a shoe guy, I'm pretty excited about where that's going. So, I want to talk about something a little different, though. You gave a really interesting presentation today, and you talked a little bit about, about IoT, yep. and you, you kind of tickled, tickled my fancy, we can say, because one, nobody here has talked much about IoT. But two, when we talk about IoT, so often the conversation is, is purely uh, in analytics, sensors, it's a mm -hmm. lot of edge conversations about edge compute and yep. what are we going to be able to... But we're not doing all this just because we want more data. There's enough data. Yep. Talk to me about how you see IoT becoming part of this product uh, innovation and development cycle that you're so, so clearly passionate about. Yes, we are, because when, when, you, when you look at where many of our customers are going these days, they are not that interested in creating more of the same or creating more products that they have already built in the past. More and more companies these days are thinking about the context in which the product is going to be used, the context of how this electric car is going to be used, the context of what will be the passenger experience of a guy flying in the air of a new plane. So more and more the notion of experience becomes cornerstone, becomes core to the way you imagine, you think, you invent the future of what your product is going to be. And when you do that, you need to start to think about how will you learn from the experience in real life. So you can model and invent, but then you need to have the feedback loop. And this is where IoT is super interesting. Yeah, there's no question about that. Now, let's take that a step further though. You said something in there. You talked about experience. Yep. Okay. So we're trying to develop experiences. We're trying to create experiences yep. for people. Uh, off, off camera, you know, a little secret we talked before. Uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, where experiences are created. So. I like Starbucks coffee. Yep. They have a, they've developed an app, right? Yep. And that app has d delivered a whole bunch of conveniences in my life. It lets me order remote, I collect points. It sees how good of a customer, it gets to know my taste. It Absolutely. also gets deeper into my wallet because uh -huh. it's simplifying the buying process. So yes, it's accomplishing it a lot of things for them and for me. Yep. But that product doesn't just come to market. They don't just go one night, we're gonna have an app and the next day it ends up like that. There's a whole bunch of design thinking and development that comes in creating that experience. How are, are you guys at Dassault System getting involved in, in, in cr helping companies to overcome just creating tech for the sake of tech and really yeah. creating experiences? I think that the example you just picked, Daniel, is, is super interesting because you, when you think about coffee beans, talk about commodity. I mean, yeah. making money and generating a universe that is delightful, that you are, that you are really craving for, from the intent of going to the Starbucks to ordering your preferred uh, latte with uh, whatever, double shot of whatever, and, uh, and working in a store that will be a place that you feel comfortable with because the atmosphere of the retail experience will be good. Because the online experience, the cloud-based experience, the application experience that you just talked about is seamless, is almost invisible. And when you walk in, you're known, your product is ready, and you, you establish one more time a link of loyalty and a link of uh, brand experience that you really like. So when you think about that, when you think about the retail experience, the application experience, the product itself, the packaging, the way people will be trained, the signage, all of that is more and more modeled today in 3D because people think in 3D, people live in 3D, all of us live in 3D every day. 
So then the question becomes, how do you blend this world of retail experience, physical experience with a world of virtual, which will be software based, like the application you just talked about. And if you don't have an engineering platform where you can invent, modern, simulate all of that virtually before it becomes real, and then when it's real, learn from the real world and re-inject that in the virtual world to make it better and again and have this continuous loop, this continuous cycle of innovation and delightful experience, then you're always missing something. So a few years back, we made a, a big bet on what we call the 3D experience platform, where we allow marketing people, engineering folks, people from retail, financial, financial folks, and engineering people, and so on and so forth, to come together and imagine, dream about that, and step by step, make it real. So, and I'd love to talk about this for a long time, but these interviews have to be, well, they don't have to be, but you know, you've got a lot of things to do. But I want to ask you kind of one more question. Do you think it's sort of almost a reverse engineering process from where a lot of innovation labs, designers, closed innovation begins? And, and, and let, me, let me contextualize that. So start with the experience and work backwards. Yeah. Like, are you seeing the companies that are doing it well instead of kind of trying to get to an experience? They're almost de designing experiences and From then the there's a byproduct of a product or a service Correct. that is, is delivered. We see that more and more. And how, how do you get that thinking? So let's step away from platforms and products for a minute Absolutely. and just say, how are you seeing, like, in the cases where you've seen this work, yeah. and you guys are part of a lot of cases where this is working, yeah. what do you, where, does the, the start, where does the change start where this becomes embedded in their culture? I think that some of the most uh, interesting and successful companies are, are the ones who have found the nice blend of process and methods, how, how you do things, tools that you use, software tools, applications that you use to manage this digital thread and this digital information, and people. And when you have the perfect balance of these three dimensions of people, process, and tools combined in a way that is not used to be more productive, but used to create something differentiated from what existed before, it's a mindset where people become suddenly more open, open to open innovation, open to ecosystem of partners, where you realize that everything cannot be built and invented in-house. So you listen carefully to what your customers are sometimes whispering to your ears, sometimes shouting in your face, and, and you blend all of that together. And step by step, you say, okay, let's, let's have a shot at what this perfect experience could be and should be. And when you do, do it digitally, when you start to sketch, in Katia, for example, you can sketch very quickly as, as a drawing. And very quickly, through the magic of software, it becomes three-dimensional, and you can be immersed in it in a matter of a few hours. It changes entirely the way you think about the experience. So you start from the end result, and like a salmon going back to, to the origin, you go back to the, to the roots of some of the most innovative and breakthrough um, ideas. And there's no question that digital twin, digital thread, kind of tying this all together, is it, it, it expedites the process where a company can really say, here's the experience. It makes it more agile, yeah. And we don't have to spend two, three, four, five years creating it. This can be done in three months, six months, nine months. We can test it and then of course the old fail fast. If this isn't right, this is we exactly can do it again. Yeah. So, wow, Olivier Rebe, thank you so Daniel, much. What a fascinating conversation. <laughs> you very we could talk about this yes. uh, so long. So thank you, everybody. We appreciate you checking us out and listening to Olivier Rebe here. Daniel Newman from Futurum Research here at the 3D Experience Forum. We'll talk to you real soon.